Hey, we did it. Okay, I gotta respect it. That's that's deserving some style points. That's a gangster move. <laughs> GG's. Is it the Mustache? Who knows? What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Hackerum Lucian Grand Plaza. And I know the deck looks like a meme at first sight or the concept, but I did manage to hit masters with it on a 6 and 1 run while learning the deck while continuously iterating and improving it. So I think there is actually some potential to the concept, mostly because it has a very unique playstyle, some very unique combos, and most of our opponents will not know how to play against this correctly. First of all, I gotta give some credit where credit is due. I used Mogwai's decklist as a template for this one. I did end up tweaking quite a few cards though, which I do believe make the deck a lot more efficient. So first of all, I'll explain the deck and then all of the tech choices that I will mention will make a lot more sense. Uh, this is basically a tempo-based... I don't know, like mid-range combo deck that tries to get maximum value off of cards like Grand Plaza and Soul Shepherd, buffing a bunch of tokens, a bunch of ephemeral tokens ideally. So for example, Haunted Relic as 1-1s, one they're not very useful, but if you make them 2-1 challengers or even 3-2 challengers, all of a sudden you can control the board completely and hit your opponent for a lot of Nexus damage. All of this also accelerates Hecarim's as well as Lucian's level up condition in insanely quickly. And both of these level up conditions are of course enormous and potentially game ending. Lucian's rally paired with a double attack can be absolutely devastating, can push a lot of damage, and of course Hecarim just buffing and summoning a bunch of ephemeral units as potentially game ending as well. That on its own is not enough to make the deck really strong though. The big payoff here is Shark, Chariot, Chariot, I don't even know how to call this, so I just call them Sharks. The sharks, of course, amplify your future ephemeral attacks if you summon them at some point in the early or mid game. And we want to make maximum use of that. And that explains quite a few of the tech choices in this list. For example, I think Stalking Shadows is potentially completely cracked in this list. This is a great way of finding sharks in the early game in matchups where we need them. So mainly against slower decks and against control decks. And of course doubling the sharks at the same time because getting two sharks each attack is much more fun than just one shark. But even if we don't hit sharks, the value this card provides is absolutely insane, especially because the second copy gets ephemeral, which is usually a downgrade to the second copy. But in this deck, this allows Soul Shepherd to buff the second copy. And most importantly of all, the second copy of the card will summon sharks on attacking if you played sharks previously. And that is especially useful if you pair it with scout units, which is the main reason why we're playing cards like Grizzled Ranger and Green Fang Warden in this list. This basically allows us to summon and attack with a shark army twice in a turn. Of course, we don't get full value out of the scout unit because it dies on the first ephemeral attack. But ideally, we'll attack once with the ephemeral scout, have all the sharks swing at our opponent, and then we'll use our regular attack with another ephemeral unit as well. Maybe something like an encroaching mist from Camivore and Soldier or anything that you discounted with Oblivious Islander, gave it ephemeral, maybe haunted relics. And then you'll have the shark army swing in a second time. But that's not all. Of course, we can let the shark army attack even more often with cards like Cataclysm, with cards like Golden Aegis. Just keep in mind, we always need some ephemeral unit to summon the shark army again. Now, I think most of the cards in this list are now pretty self-explanatory. The only one I will explain further is going to be Minion. Even though we play a fair amount of draw in this deck, we do tend to run out of steam fairly often because most of our cards are very low value, as in low mana cost. And having some continuous pressure feels really really nice as both attackers and defenders. We're also very happy about uh, Stalking Shadows hitting this card. Ephemeral Minion of course returns to our hand. It's great. It's permanent value basically. And part of the reason why this list is rather minion heavy instead of playing cards like Onslaught of Shadows or Fading Memories is because we play three Stalking Shadows. We already play six champs, three landmarks. So we want to have a fair amount of main decked units or rather followers so that Stalking Shadows doesn't whiff too often and also gives us the option between legitimate choices. Some other cards that are worth considering would be Cursed Keeper, maybe something like Blighted Caretaker. 
Pesky Spectre. Uh, this card right here is actually an interesting choice. I haven't tried that yet. It seemed a bit low value to me, but it is a cute idea. And of course, if you want to go for a bit more of a value or control oriented approach, you could consider like Rekindlers and Vengeances. I personally don't think it's necessary because we are playing a very fast combo oriented list and it doesn't really help the game plan to add slow value cards to the deck. I think one harrowing as a backup finisher is fine, even though it's not absolutely needed. We also sometimes struggle with board space on the uh, with this list because we play engines like Grand Plaza and Soul Shepherd that don't really want to trade. Apart from that, some pieces of advice, because let me tell you, the list is surprisingly hard to play. So first of all, keep in mind, you can also play Oblivious Islander without this play effect. You can just summon him as a one mana 2-1 by clicking the OK button instead of targeting a card in your hand. That can be very useful in some matchups, some aggro matchups, even in some control matchups. Second of all, Talking about matchups, you have to know if you're currently being outraced and outburned by an aggro deck. Then you don't play for the combos, right? Then Shark Carriot is not that good of a card. Then the main priority is not getting overrun and not taking too much Nexus damage. But if you're up against a control deck, you want to go much, much heavier on these combo turns and look pretty aggressively for sharks and even stalking shadows and grand plazas. So whenever we're not in the threat of getting overrun completely, grand plaza and shark carriage are gonna be our main go-tos in the mulligan. And the last piece of advice is just keep in mind and be aware of how your attack tokens work, especially with the scouts in the deck, especially if they have ephemeral, you cataclysm with them. They still give you the rally, but the scout, of course, disappears after the first attack. And try to set up your attacks so that every attack swings in with an ephemeral unit to get maximum use of the shark. Shark NATO, actually. I think I just stick with shark NATO instead of shark army. That seems a bit more fitting. Either way, this is a super fun deck to play, and I was personally surprised by how well it performed climbing up all the way to masters. I did feel like once I hit masters, I queued this up a couple more times, played against really good players, and the deck's power level dropped immensely because my opponent was very, very aware of the crazy combo potential that we have around Lucian level ups, around Shark NATO attacks, and of course the Hecarim level up, as well as the Scout synergies and so on. And if our opponent just keeps those in check and doesn't really tap below important mana thresholds or like keeps removal up for something like a Lucian, and then the matchups become much, much harder. But honestly, like I would not expect anyone before masters, before like medium or high masters, to really know how to play against this deck. So once you figure it out yourself, you should catch a lot of people off guard. I can highly recommend this, it's been super fun to play. Also feel free to try out whichever tech choices you like. And I've had a lot of epic games on stream uh, from my final push to masters as well as a couple of awesome masters games. Enjoy! Pesky as a one-off could be good on paper. It's neatly synergistic with Shark, with... Oh, okay. In this matchup, I think we just full greed, right? We're never getting Hecka through, but... It's also unlikely our opponent's overrunning us completely. We have to be aware of it, but... Okay, we're never getting Lucian through neither. We just need, like... The continuous Shark pressure. I maybe should have banked mana here. Also hope our opponent doesn't find Aftershock. <laughs> if they pass, I think we click end round. To not give them free kindred. Swing is good though. Nah, let's let's be spicy here.
So next turn we want to play Warden and Soldier, I think. So this turn we either play Keeper or Lucian. Lucian just to trade in like he's never making it through. Could also go double scout here for shark pressure. Might be better than soldier. Next turn is gonna be fun. Warden is actually cracked here. Because, our, like, if our opponent wants to protect Kindred, they'd need to take care of the unit plus the barrier. You don't get the mark anymore, what are you doing? <laughs> so they'll have to bop something like a Vengeance onto the Ephemerate one to protect Kindred, and then the non-Ephemerate one still takes, uh, uh, takes them out. I always forget that Kindred are, like... It's two things. We protect these woods as they protect us. Just because you always only see... Um, I don't even know which one this is called. Lamb, right? I always want to say her. They are one. Oh, well, well, yeah, well, it's true. I mean, it's like one entity out of two things. I don't even know how to how to describe it. Yeah, this looks like a solid power turn, though. I guess double Mystic Shot technically saves Kindred, but then my opponent's so far behind. I think I just win the game uh, regardless. That's something I didn't account for. Spicy. I, I guess I should have not pulled with the non-ephemeral one. I don't think these decks usually play Get Excited. Cataclysm should be clean. is scary. Getting close to atrocity range, but only Vi can really... Eh, atrocity mystic shot. Really rally this turn. Kind of hoping my opponent doesn't have Lucian remove it. Very optimistic though. Have you seen that Turbo Reavers Road deck? <laughs> no, I have not. It sounds like hot garbage to say the least. Ooh, okay. Could still Thermal Beam Lucian, but if they... I mean, we already saw a Mystic Shot in a Thermal. There's a... Like, the game ends if they can't remove Lucian this turn. Because we're attacking with five Ephemeral units. Which means we do get the Rally this round. 
Like, if they don't have a play anymore this turn, or if they play another Financier or Elise, it's GG. Rage! You can do it, Lucian. I believe in you. God damn it, why are you so squishy? Okay, we're kind of out of ephemerals. Okay. It's probably an upgrade card-wise. I mean, this Lucian is going to be the one that sticks, right? Cataclysm angle. My opponent tries to remove, we get a good glimpse. I mostly use Cataclysm here to try to bait a glimpse. Okay, it might actually be the Lucian that sticks. Mildly afraid of Valfeast. Okay, I think we can slam Hecarim because if our opponent has some dumb card like Renation, we glimpse. Um, I'm fairly certain we... Like, if we draw any Ephemeral, we win. Let's see if Kekarim can carry us. He'll at least force a vengeance. Or like, I mean, piercing darkness isn't enough. Senna's dawning shadow. What kind of ridiculousness could my opponent have pulled from Ferris Financier? All right, here goes nothing. Give me an ephemerate. Oh, I hate this game so much. Is Endron ever better? I don't think so. Gave me ephemerals? Uh, no. <laughs> I beg to differ. I mean, I guess it kind of did. Okay, so we just need to dodge Aftershock and we win. Have a hacker, have three. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh, another box. We we beat box though, as long as Hackerim still pulls Ladros. Hey, we did it. Why not rally? It might have been cleaner to rally first, yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta respect it. That's that's deserving some style points. That's a gangster move. <laughs> GG's. I don't know about Curse Keeper. It's only really good if we do find Plaza. 
It's also decent if we put Islander onto it. And it's a glimpse beyond target, but outside of that... It's quite mediocre. Um, I think we have to keep Plaza, even though this is an aggro matchup. And on turn 4 we can start trading off. Running the everyone's a garden tree lady. No, I was. I'm considering it. I don't think she's good enough. Could be like a one-off, but I don't think, think she's really good here. Oh, I love that they develop. We can get two blockers in one action, and next turn we can still go plaza into relic. Levolution rally right away. Save that 1 HP, we're taking all of those out anyway. They can further Lucian. Not sure if that's good. Copy a fearsome blocker right now. Why the two mana one? Because it can block fearsomes. For Oblivious Islander, I guess. Rip. How many spells? Like 15 spells. I think 17 units. Big rip. Like the sad thing is that this is the better defensive play. Because we can trade two units off. Mm. I think we have to do it. And then if our opponent develops next turn, we can go for harrowing. Effectively at 2 HP. Clear it out. The shadow approaches.
Six, five, five. Yeah, open attacking is better, right? Six, five, five. Um, wait, six, 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 seven. They block seven with yeah. Plays around Decimate and uh, Demolitionist top deck. And around like Stalking Shadows Doom Beast. Only leaves them Noxian Fervor as an out. Who needs healing? You just outrace them. Offense is the best defense. Never forget. Like, I'm wondering if the Warden is just straight up better than Curse Keeper. Elise and Zoe. We we'll probably want more sharks. And Plaza for sure. One too many, but that's fine. Am I enjoying the deck? It's I really, really like it. It's very different. Very unique playstyle. I want to attack this turn. Pass looks fine. Nice, we're getting an Eye of the Dragon for free. If our opponent's popping this here. Okay. Unfortunate. We gotta give him the opportunity to make mistakes. Eh. It's these two, isn't it? I can next turn. I'm not sure if I should have played Curse Keeper. I could have just... Gone for a pass and round angle. Keep more board space. Obvious bait is obvious. But gives board space. Nah. Don't get in my way. Man, Lee Sin is a really tough matchup. It feels like we can't do anything if they find white flames. They just have like Palmer Will for Hacker. We're already kind of screwed. I wish I wouldn't have played this guy.
The board space issues are real. Hey seafood man, how do you conquer your natural crustacean instincts of running away from sharks to play this deck? Are lobsters and sharks mortal enemies? I think sharks are, or rather lobsters are kind of cool with sharks. There's a Mogwai deck. Isn't every deck a Mogwai deck? You need to ask yourself the big questions in life. Face me. Face me. Why are you giving me the Lucian level up? Quit yo yapping. Can't really die here. Well, twin disciplines plus pick is gay, but if I block with Hacker, then I also lose to that. Actually, it's the rally of evolution. Okay, at least we're not dead. We're actually quite fine. We're rallying here. We can play soldier or um, spirits. Wait, this is low-key good, right? Could play spirits this turn because next turn they can get nopified. So one contest this. I really wish I wouldn't have played the Curse Keeper. He's making this game so much harder for me, it's insane. Seems like a preemptive rally. It was not lost yet for our opponent, but we'll take it. We take those. Like, it's a very common misconception in card games that people worry too much about extreme scenarios and they don't really think enough in probabilities. Like, how often will that really happen? Would Remembrance be bad? I think it's not good enough. I keep Shark until turn 4, then we can play Plaza into Shark and uh, trade something off immediately. Besides that, I see no reason to do it anyway since you're running Stalking already to copy the minion. Yeah, but our odds of finding a minion that we only have one copy of are not that high. Ah, oh, man. Camervoran Soldier would have been such a sick top deck here. Um, that makes things a bit more awkward. Maybe they'll bite for the pass. Nope. True aggro player. Whirling death a card? Kinda is. I don't think I would mind my exponent, opponent expanding it here. Pro chant keeps this alive. Yeah, Cataclysm is bad here though. 
Stalking Shadows is a sick top deck. Okay, this is straight up ridiculous. Does my opponent's deck play direct Nexus Bird? I don't think it does. Ah, we're one mana off of all of the good combos. Shark into Cataclysm. Hackerim levels next turn, this might be lethal. Wait, do sharks stack up exponentially? Do we get two or three sharks right now? I'm not even sure. I guess we shall see in a second. Nice draw. I think it's lethal anyway. Except for... Well, it's probably Whirling Death actually on my opponent's end. So it's two sharks. Um, assuming this is a Whirling Death, we will push... 3, 3, 4, 4. That is 14. It's not enough, but if we play Onslaught, it's gonna be enough. Oh, we can keep Hacker in the back line. Isn't that the big brain play? Pepsi, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. But then again, like, if we full swing, we also don't lose to Whirling Death anymore. It would have to be double Whirling Death. Right? The only thing is Hacker has to pull. So this way it's... Three, three, four, four, th wait, three, three, twelve, sixteen. Okay, double whirling death is enough. If we do this, double whirling death is also definitely enough. I cut after the ephemera. I don't think that changes anything. Because Whirling Death takes him all. Oh, I, yeah, okay. It's technically cleaner, but it doesn't change stuff for this attack. Thing is, we only really. Like, the only realistic answer for our opponent is uh, double Whirling Death here. And Whirling Death hits Hekka anyway. with other units? No, because we push more damage. If we do it this way. Oh, GG! That was like a gun show, like our opponent flexing on us with a Battle Fury on turn 5. We're just coming back with a level hacker remote TK on turn six. Oh, and we hit masters off of, off of this. It was a good one to hit masters off of. GG's. Tier one deck. I mean, the win rate is solid. Have you ever thought, oh, nice or interesting back and forth is now decided by RNG? Not necessarily, but especially as a content creator, you sometimes get those, like, oh snap moments due to RNG. Like, they do make for some memorable experiences. Alright, this time we'll go get him. Um... Stalking Shadows is technically good, but we have to worry about being overrun. Grizzled Ranger would be good if we had the token on turn 4. I think we keep stalking. Could keep Lucian just basically as fodder. But I'd rather find any of the other two drops. We 
We play Sharikiri because on turn 4 our play is going to be Soldier. Uh, actually, turn 5. Could play this defensively next turn. Mm. I thought you'd never ask. Simon said he wants to mentor you by beating you. Well, try me. Is he streaming right now as well? I mean, to be fair though, if mentoring means he's gonna teach me how to get those uh, Caitlyn rolls, then I'm, I'm definitely interested. I could go for a turn 5 Hecarim, I just think it's really bad. Not if you had Rekindler. Rekindler would not be what makes this play good or justifiable. Okay, now we've set up like the three high-ish priority removal targets. Okay, and that at least means we're getting this through. This might get Mystic Shot, which is probably fine with us. This pulls the lowest value. All right, you don't have Challenger. I'm surprised Simon didn't put that on the stack he gave. Like, well, I guess then we still pull Ezra with a 3-1. We did get a shark. Yeah, it's probably better to protect Ezra. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Unleashed spirits into rally is kind of fun. Like, Hecarim just dies here. Stalking shadows. I don't think Hecarim is a good play right now. Like we trade 6 mana for 3 mana and Ezreal levels. Kind of sad we can't really use mana this turn. The other line would have been to pick the... Um, whatever it's called, the other card. Play it this turn. And then next turn try Hecarim. But Hecarim probably either gets sentried or tri-beamed or... Uh, Mystic Shot flocked. If he doesn't pay attention to hand positioning, he might might waste the stun spider here. Perfect. They don't know what they're up against. Come on. We go. This 
static shock kind of ruins me. So we already took out two stun spiders, giving Hecarim better chances to survive. Although it's still, he's still likely toast. Because we didn't uh, get a flock out yet. Hecarim is kind of a dead card in this matchup. Okay. That's a dead Ezra. Hecarim Rally Angle. Uh, we could go down to 1 HP. It's a tough choice. We know they play Static Shock, we know they play Mystic. I think we gotta play the long game. Pretty sure I'm not gonna rally here though. Not playing around flock. I can't play around flock because of the Tarkas passive. No rally where he's tapped. He has ravenous flock mana and played zero ravenous flocks this uh, game. I wouldn't really call that tapped. I would call that a waste of a rally. Cataclysm would have been nice here. I think we saw one or two main deck mystic shots and we saw static already. Man, this game is a thriller. If he has Ezreal, we're dead. They might have never had Flock and they could have played into it, I suppose, with a rally. Hmm. Ooh. Harrowing into a uh, Kata should be the play. Harrowing just to get a high HP blocker. And of course, this is bad against Scorched Guillotine, Ravenous Flock. Oh, actually, if we trade into Farron, we can't Cataclysm anymore, can we? Interesting. That's actually a funny scenario. GG. I think if he would have swung, he would have won. Don't 
Does Farron ever swing here? I mean, it makes sense, to be honest. Um, because you have flock for the non-ephemeral Hecarim, and I'm telling my opponent, okay, I want to block with the healthy Hecarim. Right? So they swing my Hecarim blocks. I don't have a target for Cataclysm. Uh, Simon can ravenous flock the damaged Hecarim, and I start my turn with no units on the board. That being said, I still have three mana. I could replay stuff and threaten open attack lethal. But if I develop next turn, they, like, Simon can decimate plus one damage ping. 